Hello, everybody. Roger Durling, Executive Director of the Santa Barbara International Film Festival. And I am so thrilled to be with director and screenwriter uh, Filippo Meneghetti and the film Two of Us. It, Two of Us is France's official entry for the Academy Awards and is shortlisted for Best International Feature Film. It's also nominated for the Golden Globes for Best Foreign Language Film and it's a Cesar Award nom uh, nominee for the two actresses, uh, for Martin Chevalier and Barbara, the great Barbara Sukowa, and then um, is nominated for Best Original Screenplay and Best First Film. Um, Filippo, I am beyond thrilled. I told you before we came on board, I, I am such a fan of your film. And I'm, I was stunned to hear this is your first um, time making a film because it is it is so well done um i i want to jump right in and and ask you about the the architectural idea of two apartments and and the landing in between and how metaphorical that becomes about their relationship how did you arrive at that at, at that concept well, first of all, uh, hello everybody, and thanks for all the beautiful things you just said. And uh, well, yeah, that's actually the architectural device, so to speak, of the film. Uh, it was the very first core of the idea, uh, meaning that I had the idea of telling this kind of story in mind since a long time. You know, the story of it's a story of, about exclusion and self-censorship. But then you know, I'm always trying to find the right angle. And I actually came across in, in, in real life, uh, a friend of mine, had, uh, his neighbor, which were two widows that became widows pretty much at the same time. And they were living like Nina and Madeleine to keep each other company. And so nothing to do with the characters of the film, but to keep each other company, they were living in two apartment, one in front of the other and sharing, kind of sharing the landing. And when I saw that uh, it clicked, and I thought that I, 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 I had there a, a very simple metaphor, a simple device to tell the story I wanted to tell because, you know, the, the two apartments are kind of the mirror of the characters. Uh, Madeleine's apartment is the mirror of her, of her life somehow, of her character, what is going on inside her. You know, it, it is a very cozy apartment full of all the things that you, that you, uh, bring together in 30 years of family life, you know, sense, you know, useless thing, like, you know, I have this here, you know, whatever, where it comes from, I don't even remember. And, and, and you know, this kind of thing weighs on her, like her life, like her family life weighs on her. Right. And, and so I, with my set design, we used to say that, that it has to be so cozy that you don't want to live in it, you know, it, it, it's kind of make you choke. Mm -hmm. and, and, and on the other end, uh, Nina's apartment, it's an empty apartment, it's a fake apartment and, that we, and we don't want, we had this idea of not letting uh, the audience find that out before the stroke. Uh, so it's a fake apartment like her life, uh, you know, gets empty after, um, after she, she feels she, she, she is alone after the, the stroke. So the, 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 the her, her despair is is mirrored by by the emptiness of of the of the 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 environment. And but then, on then yeah, go ahead. But on top of that, you have the landing. Landing becomes a border, a frontier. Correct. Yeah. I mean, at first, yeah. is is a connection between the two of them. But once, but those doors are closed, exactly. and it becomes a border between exactly. the two worlds. And and the, the door that are always doors that are always open are always shut. And that's, you know, that's, I, I'm always looking, I'm always hunting for metaphor, for things that I can shut that will show what is going on inside the character without having to, you know, to explain or to say things. And, 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 and I guess the simplest, uh, the idea, the simplest, the metaphor, the better it works because it, it goes uh, unseen somehow, you know, it's, 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 it's easier. You don't have to, to push it and, and uh, just there and you film it. And, Correct. And so that that was the really the, the, the starting point of of of, of the, the story. Now, Filippo, um, the 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 directing approach. Uh, 
I've always loved, to me, Hitchcock and his love stories are, are the ones that I gravitate more towards, like Notorious, where there is suspense and a thriller, but it's an ultimately love story. And you, this relationship becomes a thriller. Um, and you, uh, you, you add all the suspense and techniques of thriller and suspense. When can you talk about that? And when did you decide to impose the idea of a thriller or suspense over that love story? Well, the, again, it is the starting point of the film. You know, the idea came together like, and, and it was funny because at the beginning, when I first said that to my producer, and then especially my producer got it really well because it's a very smart man <laughs> but but uh right after when we were financing the film it looked a little bit strange i, I remember as in having this strange feeling of talking to people saying you know it's it, it could be a melodrama but it's actually a thriller and it you know it it it, it sounds strange at that time but I, I i knew that i mean anyway it was the idea of the film uh you know because uh, love is a very complex feeling and it's made out of so many layers, and some of them are not so. The French has this nice word, have this nice word, fleur bleu. It's not just just nice and and you know passion and and an easy thing. On the contrary, love is very contradictory, and it has layers of of uh, obsession and secrets and and lack of the other, anxiety because you're lacking the other, anxiety Correct. you don't know what the other is thinking and if he sh she'll be there again still. And so to me, it looks that, that the thriller is a very good tool to, to, to tell this kind of thing, to, 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 to go carve this kind of feeling uh, and, and also not to push the emotion towards the audience too much because thriller has this very nice thing. It, it keeps the audience proactive. And, and I like to have this kind of dialogue with an audience that is, is working to understand uh, and is gathering their own emotion is they are gathering their own emotion their own take of what i'm what i'm um, I'm, I'm you know creating somehow with that with the people i made the film with so so yeah yeah one of the things that i i was infatuated with is your sound design and um you know the birds co cowing you know um at the beginning of the film um the 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 pan is sizzling and is disturbing um you also the spin cycle of the washing machine um you know the clock is ticking and she is clanking the the tea cup you know can you tell us about your approach to the sound, sound design and how it helped uh, tell the story. Well, yeah, sure. I, I love that you bring that up because it's something that I love to work on. And, and also in my, my short, because I, I, I feel that sound is very under uh, uh, used in, 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 in film. You know, you, we, don't, we don't use it as much as we could uh, because it's very, I, I love to work on sound because it's very subtle and it's the, I think it's a wonderful tool to get the audience into inside the character, inside the point of view of the character without being too uh, frontal with that. You know, the, the audience will yeah. notice less because they, they are taking care of images. They are getting, paying attention to the images while the sound is there. And so this idea uh, in, in two of us was to use everyday life uh, sounds since it is a very everyday life story and make something intensify all these sounds uh, so they become so that they become kind of a, of a soundtrack or you know it's sound design at the end and as, at the end the idea is to, to to start from very something very very simple and 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 get it to the point in which it is the psychology of the character that you're listening to Mm -hmm. uh, state of mind of the character the, you're listening to and 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 those uh, sounds and those sound transition are written since uh, you know the script and sometime even before i mean the pen thing is something that i you know it was in my mind since even before thinking about the story i always thought that that could be a cool thing to do and so uh, once you find out that it fits in the story 
then then it's a you know it's kind of thing that you I mean I wanted to do it for you. I, I love this so much because these characters are driven to extreme behavior and then the sound what as you said was mirroring their psychology you know when when Barbara where Nina is seated listening to the clock ticking and then she starts banging the tea it 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 tells you her state of mind you know that she she's been driven to extreme behavior <laughs> but that you know it's that, that that's what i you know cinema is giving us so many tools and so many things to play with and, and i i mean i really love it you know that's that's uh, uh i can i can spend uh, days on 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 editing sound and 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 trying to find the right the right thing because it is an opportunity as a filmmaker uh, that you have there and it is cheaper <laughs> than other <laughs> things to do and and also it is more subtle and and and, and again uh i think which it goes are, yeah go ahead unseen. i'm sorry it goes, no no it goes unseen yeah yeah which That's actually it. leads me to the uh, another question about your film that you show a lot of restraint i mean you you use the word subtle and when i was watching your film you know it could have easily you mentioned it could have easily become melodrama instead you restrain the the emotions on the film you know can you talk about that approach mm -hmm. Uh, you know, with my co-writer, with, with, I, I wrote the film uh, with Malisomba Varazmi, and with her, we had some keywords, and one of them, uh, we, 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 we work in French, so one of the words was retenu, that means exactly restrain, I mean, more or less, it's, it's a very good translation, uh, very close. Uh, and the idea was, how do we work uh, with a, a expressive economy, how we do we do, how would we get to the emotion we want to convey to the audience and we want to, the audience to, to, to gather, uh, to, to reach uh, with the less possible element, especially in dialogue. That was something that we were really uh, concerned about uh, because uh, I guess also, you know, in life things don't happen uh, the way, I mean, in life, sometimes you can live something very uh, strong and tragic and, and whatever, and, and, and you don't say, huge phrases, sentences, huge word, very important thing. You just, maybe you have small talks. So we didn't want to go there. We wanted, again, to use the less possible element and, and also give room to the audience. You know, that's, I think, the most important thing. Uh, I, I believe my job is to trigger the imagination of the people who are watching the film, not mm -hmm. to, 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 to push their imagination. So I believe I have to do just enough to, to trigger their imagination and to leave them with their own uh, take on, on and with their own emotion uh, about the story I'm, I'm, I'm telling because it, it's going to be more powerful because it's their own. It's going to be more adequate to their own uh, uh, you know, ideas about the world. So yeah, correct. I mean, it, and it's one of the, the the beautiful things about the film is that you have literal doors that are closed and doors that open, but then it reverberates in our mind as you know deeper meaning of of living closed off from you know appearances of what we show to people what we you know the way we look into things etc it, it's it's um, i'm I, I i if you can tell i'm totally infatuated with your film you know uh it, so cool. it, <laughs> I love it. I, you know can you you know and then you know you the lighting um is specifically once once the 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 stroke starts you you go into low key lighting which is more suspenseful and then also i i'm curious to hear you talk about the coloring you know it, you, there's a lot of amber of sort of like yellow you know dark yellows you know can you talk about the lighting of the film yeah uh, i mean i i work with with the with the director of photography which is a, a very young a very talented french uh, director of photography his name is Yolori Amara. And, and we did a short before and, and we, we, I think we really, I guess we really enjoy to, to, to work uh, on, on, on together. And, and, and um, the idea, you know, it's a, it, it was a very, uh, the idea of working on, on a lot of nights 
you know, it, it's a very, after the stroke, it gets the, 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 the proportion of nights on the film uh, gets uh, bigger. And, 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 and I love that. I love to shoot at night. My, my shorts are pretty much all nights and, and that's it. Uh, but then in a feature, you cannot go just nights. But I, I, I love to shoot that uh, because, you know, there's something about uh, the, the um, relation between what the story you're telling and the form you're, you're using and the images that you're making. And even though it looks, it, it sounds banal when, when, I, when I say that, but somehow it is an hide and seek game and it is things that are hiding in the shades and under the surface. So, uh, you know, working on shadows and of what we don't show. Uh, and and it's, it's, we had this idea that in every shot, uh, we have to have some shadowy part and, and thing we, we, that you cannot see and things that are contradictory uh, between the, the, you know, contradictory element, because uh, I mean, I had this feeling that life is contradictory. And so every, we had to put this, it was an, the other keyword was contradiction. Every shot has to have an element that contradicts the rest of the shot. And so likewise, that meant that even when you have a normal kind of everyday life uh, shot, then we have to have something in the background that was not lit or something uh, that, that, you could hide something there, and and you know it's 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 a very probably naive faith in the fact that if we put that all the time, it's gonna sound, it's gonna resonate with the audience sooner or later, and oh, and right. and um, and about the coloring, um, we uh, actually the film was supposed to be shot in summer, and we had other ideas, but then you know I guess filmmaking is a lot about adapting. Uh, but to the condition you are that, that you are given, and so we shot in in fall, and so the trees were you know everything got to fall, and we decided to to go with it. Uh, so we decided to kind of of of, of follow uh, what uh, nature and condition were giving us, and bring that into the interiors as well. Mm -hmm. So you know because again uh, it was it was a concern that we choose to have. Um, and, and I like that and, and it was something that we worked since the, the writing with my co-writer to, 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 to kind of uh, feel uh, free to use different genres and different, different tools of different genres in the film and mm -hmm. so the problem was how do we keep that uh, consistent how do we keep that compact so uh, again in every aspect of the shape of the film uh, we we were looking for consistency on other things like coloring and 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 you know the kind of the way we go about uh, shooting, uh, not using too many different lenses, for instance, and and you know trying to to trying to keep it tight, to keep it to be to keep it uh, to keep it uh, small, I guess something like mm -hmm. this. Yeah, 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 claustrophobic. Um, the you know tell us about shooting the scene where Nina and. And are having the conversation about the past life of the of of uh, Mado, and you keep the camera on on Mado, and we watch her her reaction with the eyes. You know, um, uh, well, that was a uh, really an idea that came since the script. I mean. Uh, uh, even before the script, uh, the, the the idea was again to to how do we <clears throat> how do we put the audience uh, into the point of view? But I mean, on a, uh, I don't know if it is in English word cognitive side. Yeah, uh, cognitive. Yes, cognitive uh, of Madeleine. Uh, so since she had a stroke, then I spoke with uh, doctors and so on, and I I know people that had that problem, and and uh, you know sometimes you are there and then the next time you are there uh you're lucid i mean it's in two days and 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 how do we do, do how do we retranscript that cinematograph in, in cinemas uh cinema wise and so there was this idea that we can play with sound and and you know you get extremely concentrated i mean if you're madeleine on something which is the conversation but then uh, you, next time, you know, we switch, actually the sound switch to the next scene. And the next, the next thing you, you, next time you are there, it's when your uh, 
grandson is you know showing you the the the, the pictures correct and 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 through that uh you know long zoom in uh, we wanted to get into her uh to get the audience as close as possible to her mind so something you know you just you are just able to notice something which is very very important because again life is contradictory and in the case of madeleine uh she gets sick and and her sickness it's somehow liberating her she gets free because through her sickness she 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 get rid of all the things of all the chain that were holding her and so that's also what we wanted to say that once she got sick there's one thing that matters and nothing else and so the 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 cinematography or the, the the idea in cinema that that i had to retranscript that was she just listened to one precise thing and you know we 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 narrow the circle of her attention with the zoom you know at the beginning there's room and then ta -ta -ta, there's nothing more than this phrase uh, she was my my father was the only lover of lover. her life which is the other way around nina was the only nina lover. who's on the other but side she knows it she gets it yeah and, and so that everything was made to, to to take the audience as close as possible to the character um Anne is such a fascinating character, uh, the daughter. Um, she, you use the word contradictory and, you know, she's not a villain. She's not an antagonist, but she is, you know, it's, it's such a rich character. I mean, at first when I saw it, I'm thinking she's homophobic and no, she's not homophobic. She's jealous of the affection that her mother has for somebody else. You know, can you tell us about writing that character and achieving that 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 performance? Now, first of all, there's a, a wonderful actress, which is Léa Drucker, uh, which is an amazing French actress, uh, very talented, smart, and full of nuances, and, you know, being able uh, to play different things at the same time and, and uh, making you feel the empathy and then still making you feel the empathy while she does wrong things. And this is, I think, very rare. Uh, and so she's, you know, <laughs> chapeau to her. She's such a, such a great actress. And, and um, then we, with my co-writer, it was a very tough character to write, exactly because uh, the, we, we always were concerned with this uh, balance you need to like her at first, because otherwise, mm -hmm. if, you don't, if you don't feel close to her, then the movie is not going to work, uh, for sure. Uh, so, so we need to the audience to have empathy for her, uh, and that's where Lea is wonderful, because the, and you don't have so much time to do it because the two main characters are Nina and Madeleine, so you cannot spend too much time on her. So it has to be, you know. Uh, precise uh, and then uh, the the very uh, big problem we had was how do we uh, get the audience to understand why she does what she does and and how do we get the audience not to uh, of course the audience are not going to like what she does but you you still need to be close enough to her so that you can still be in the film be in the process of her mind and in the process of her of her uh, as you said exactly, she's not homophobic. She just betrayed. You know, her mother is a role model. Uh, she's okay. the person which she love, which she loves the, the most. And and she always uh, uh, she spent her life saying to her brother, "No, mom, it's okay. She never betrayed dad and whatever, whatever, whatever else." But then she find out that her mom does not trust her enough to tell her the most okay. important thing of her life, and that is really hurting. I mean, uh, blessed love, I think, is capable of everything. And, and so, uh, so what we decided and writing, you know, we had, we had a very uh, precise idea about point of view. You know, the film start with Madeleine, Tilda Stroke, and we are always from her point of view. Then mm -hmm. we switch to Nina and we are always on her point of view. Then the third act, so to speak, is you know between the three the two of them and we we um, change that just for five or six scenes uh when Anne 
is making this switch, making this, taking this decision, and we go from her point of view. And, and that came quite late into the writing process because we, we, we realized that if we didn't do that, you know, I'm kind of uh, stubborn and I want to have rules while I write because it helped me to, to, it helped me to shape things. And, and uh, so we decided to, to go to Anne in her point of view, because otherwise we, we were never going to, to be able to, 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 to give justice somehow to her character and to her, her, her art, which, you know, there's something that I, 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 I saw in people that I know that find out about found out about their their, par their parents and they even though they were the most uh, open minded people I saw a friend of mine go crazy about this kind of situation really and I was so astonished I mean so so, so struck by this kind of, of reaction that I saw in real life uh, mm. but, that I wanted to 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 go into it and and to 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 address that kind of of, of uh, a reaction and and then was it was um yeah you know it, it's also about you know my co-writer worked on that and and the actress which is great yeah she's a wonderful actress now so it, there's two women in love with each other and they're in their 70s and you know the the freshness of actually seeing you know older characters and love and so passionate in love you know can you tell us about I mean I know you've answered this question before but but the importance of seeing that on the screen well yeah it is important because I guess it was uh, the kind of uh, representation that was lacking you know and 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 I feel the responsibility as a filmmaker to 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 fill that void and also to to you know the, the, I see things in real life that I don't see uh, on a screen. <laughs> uh, I have a problem with it. Uh, I mean, I have a problem with it. It's just something like, since I, that's what I do, I tell stories. Well, uh, I, I, I guess it's, it's something very interesting to, to tell and it touches me for very reason, various reasons, personal and you know, people close to me and, and so on. But then also, uh, I guess this is an issue that, that, that that we all deal with. Uh, we are we are facing a, a true obsession, I guess, with, with, with youth and perfection of the body. And and, and I, I, of course, we all feel bad about ourselves since the representation that we see that we are confronted with are just unachievable. You know, the, the, you cannot be like most of the thing that you see on the screen, most of the people you see on the screen, just because you, you you are not. Uh, and, and so I really wanted to, to show that, that, that people in their 70s with wrinkles and everything, and, and the actress were brave enough to, 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 to trust me on that and to let me sh film that in the way we did, are charming, beautiful, and most of all, that in their 70s, people want to live, to love, to live life to its fullest. And I hope that when I, if I get to 70 years old, I, I, I hope I will be able to, you know, to to love and to live life to its fullest. So I guess it was my responsibility to show that in a, in a film. And, and one of the other things I have to be grateful to you is the fact that the magnificent Barbara Sokoa, who was Rainer, uh, Werner Fassbender's muse and Marguerite von Trotta, um, such a phenomenal icon in cinema and you've given her such a remarkable uh, job um, uh, role you know tell us about about choosing her I mean did you did you write the role with her in mind or 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 it, it came about uh, well I, I I tend not to start to write I mean it's my first feature so you know I don't have a huge career behind me to tell. I used to do this but at, at least when when I we started to, to write the film I think it's I mean I don't I'm scared about writing with somebody in mind uh, because you know uh, especially my first feature Barbara Sukovov can clearly say no to my film so then it's going to be difficult to moan it uh, if I have her mind since the beginning you know so it's better to you know just to write about a character but then uh, she came across my mind and the producer mind very, very quick when we started to, to, to think about uh, who, was go who was actually going to play the role. Because, you know, Barbara, as you said, she's such a, you know, I still remember the first time I saw Lola. Lola uh, yeah. It was in a retrospective. And I got out of the, mo of the movie theater and I was like, oh, 
<laughs> oh my god she she is amazing she has she, she has a an energy and she's brave on the screen that's something that really uh, she goes as far as you can imagine she will go and that's rare. and still and still you root for her because i mean i was thinking i was explaining to somebody that she she breaks that window and you mm -hmm. would think this is a maniac but no you actually are rooting for her and it comes from this force of nature in her it's incredible to be honest the thing that she break the window it's something that with malison with my co-writer we wrote uh, because barbara was playing the character no wow. no, no kidding i mean uh, i started to to hang out with her uh, you know, because she, the film was very hard to finance, so so we had time <laughs> to rewrite and to think and so on while we were trying to find the money, uh, and and um, and I start to hang out with Barbara whenever she was in Europe because she, you know she lives in New York and and, and I live in France, and and um, and so so uh, as, when you start to to spend time with her, you realize that she has an en energy. Uh, which is about her, her persona, actually. You know, it's even bigger than 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 that. And, and so, I really had the the feeling that that if she plays the role, Nina is gonna just not going to accept it. Uh, Frederic Madeleine son just shut the door. She won't accept it. So, so really, that I, we were speaking with a writer and said, "Yeah, I guess she will do something." And we came up with this idea of her breaking the the window because because Barbara brings that. And if you have the the chance that I had that she makes you this wonderful gift of of her talent and trust to 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 to, to play Nina uh, the role, then I guess it's very important to try to make the most out of it and to adapt the role and to to try to you know to use it to its fullest. Now, Martin, I not. wasn't. I, Martine, I wasn't familiar with, and 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 she is just incredible because um, she has to convey so much of it through her eyes and 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 her intern. I mean, you know, tell us about casting her and and did she find it challenging the fact that she has to convey so much just through her eyes. Well, you know, Martine, she is. Uh, she haven't done much cinema in life, but she's a legend in French theater. You know, she's like one of the greatest actress in French theater of the last. Like comedy Frances. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Which I wasn't aware of because I'm Italian and I and I came to live in France uh, in my thirties. So you know, I so I, I I but I knew. I mean, when we started to think about actresses, I went to the casting director and uh, and I said that I I was looking for a theater actress to play Madeleine. Because I and believe, why? okay, go ahead. So, because I believe, you know, that the character, I mean, the, an actress, bring with her her story. So, as much as Barbara has nothing to do in a small town in southern French, France, so as Nina, uh, I guess that uh, Madeleine, so somebody like Martine, which cinema's audience don't know that much, even though she's, you know, for theater audiences, she's like a great Martin Chevalier, uh, she was going to melt better into the role of Madeleine Girard of the small town in southern France and uh, to, to disappear better in this you know it's about love stories about chemistry so I needed two very different elements because that works better and on the same time you know a theater actress I, I had this thing in mind uh, she's more used to use technique to you know to to and to express things very far and so I, I had this feeling that she if she doesn't have to talk then it, you know, the body will be something, a language that she could understand more, you know, uh, easily. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then, you know, we, we, we worked on that and, 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 and you know, I, I'm really happy with the result actually. And, and you know, Martin, oh, she's, it's, she's it's just, uh, such a great actress again. I, I was really lucky on my first feature, this kind of, you know. Yeah, uh, but talent. did you, did they, I mean, you had Barbara Sokoa, did, did, did you had um, the two actresses interact with each other before shooting? I mean, like audition, um, um, just to see how would they get along? Uh, yeah, that was a really, you know, uh, actually not much. Uh, we had, uh, which was, uh, 
which was a worry for me because if they don't go along well together, then what am I gonna do? Uh, so to be honest, we had the, I arranged a dinner uh, with the two of them three months before the shooting, which was anyway too late for to do anything else later, <laughs> if that didn't work. But uh, because we didn't have time to rehearse, uh, so we didn't have any rehears before the shooting. Uh, we just had the reading, a reading of a full script one day. And, and so we had this dinner and it was amazing for me because, so I'm very uh, tense, I'm very nervous when I, when I get to, the, to, to this dinner because I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, crossing fingers that everything is going to work and they're gonna like each other and so on. And then like uh, half an hour uh, into the dinner, they are talking about very intimate things like their details of their love life. Uh, <laughs> And I'm listening. <laughs> and that was, you know, I'm not gonna forget it. Uh, that, that, that was so. That was so strange, and and, and that was so. I guess uh, that's the kind of thing that you have to be a filmmaker to to live that kind of situation. You know, to such you know great lady of acting talking about very precise detail of their love story and lovers and things they live they went through. And I guess that that that's where the chemistry happened. And, and 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 then and then you know and then we, we all wanted to to yeah we have, we all have the same goal which is make the best possible picture and I guess we all like what we do and we like to, to work. Yeah, well, the two of them are just phenomenal, incredible. How did you arrive to the Ricky Nelson song "I Will Follow"? That it's sung in Italian, but it mm -hmm. is that recurring theme through the movie. Uh, well, since the beginning, there was this idea of using a song uh, coming back into the film because uh, it's a film uh, where the backstory have a huge uh, weight since it's you know a long-lasting relation, uh, and we really uh, one of the rules was to avoid flashback. So, so again, to keep it compact, you know, to keep a, a, a small object. I wanted to, to do a small object, something like the film has to be small uh, somehow. And, and quick and and so so we, we, we had this idea of using the song because it you know again sounds uh, stays with the audience so the idea was you know the song will work about their backstory will will represent will embody the their backstory and also there was this idea uh, so, so where, where, why I came across that song is that we were looking for a song that has lyrics that correspond to the love story, to the story of the film. And because again, I said before, we didn't want to say those words in dialogues, but I wanted those words to be in the film. And, you know, it's a French film, so the song is in Italian. So the audience actually is not that much aware about those lyrics while the film is playing, but they are there. Mm -hmm. And at the end, we translate the lyrics and they are there and they were there all along. A little bit like their love story, you know, it was there all along for everybody, but nobody sees that. And and so again, it was it was a way to 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 put emotion and and things there, but pretty much unseen, or at least you know trying to keep it on the on the on the border of of things that you can see and you can understand, but you might even skip or pass by. And Filippo, one last question: one of the things that is terrific about both characters is that you never present them as victims. You know, they're both fighters till the end and they're fighting for each other's love. Can you tell us about, about that? Sure, it's funny. That was the other rule, one of the other rules we had. We didn't want any victims in the, into this film because, uh, because I don't think we live like you know, none, none of us is a victim like we want to be victims. And every, I think everybody's fighting uh, the, her own, his own battle in life. And, and so we, we wanted to make a film that, that resembled life. And, and, and I, we really didn't want, again, it is not a melodrama. Uh, we didn't want some, somebody that would just suffer what destiny is throwing at them. Uh, we, you know, again, it's and it is a love story. So love is a very very strong force, uh, and it it helps you fight. And so since they love, they fight. And 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 yeah. Again, also the secondary 
kind of character. We never wanted, uh, you know, villain and goods, good, good, good people. We wanted every characters to be ambiguous, to be more than one thing, to have a shadowy part or bad part, and nobody is a victim and nobody is is uh, is just uh, there to to be to be. Um, lived by the story i don't know if it makes sense no no absolutely yeah 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 and and so are you working on the now now that you've gotten one film done are you working on a new project uh well so far i mean these very days i'm working no i'm not working on something else because i'm doing this and then you know the film was released in spain since cinema opened there so i was in spain and then we had uh the cesar in france so i had all these Things which is great uh, to, to to do, and it's and it's and it's a pleasure to do that. So I didn't have I I kind of uh, put next the next project on standby, and then I have several ideas. Uh, but for sure, I'm gonna go with something very different, I guess, because I like that in filmmaking. You know, it's more than one life, and every time you are uh, studying something and you are getting into a, a new adventure, and I and I love that about filmmaking. And mm-hmm. then we'll see. I'm trying to understand what I want to. To do next but um, do. i have several ideas but something well, different i have no doubt that it's going to be great because i i definitely look forward to see what you do uh in, the, in your next project you're extremely talented it's a very terrific terrific film you've done two of us and um you know i wish you the best you know there's there's you know quite a lot Thanks. ahead of you yeah yeah thank you so much Filippo. grazie mille Ah, merci. Ok, la mia mamma è italiana, Felipe. Ah, veramente? Sì, ah, sì, e parlo... Quindi, avremmo potuto parlare in italiano, solo che nessuno sì. avrebbe capito nulla. E, e, e moi je parle français aussi, parce que j'ai alors, habité en France. Ouais. E allora la prochaine fois qu'on va se voir, on va parler dans trois langues, ça sera super. D'accord. <laughs> Thanks okay. so much. Au revoir, ciao. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ciao.